Far away in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, there are nine islands showing nature in its purest state. I am talking about the Portuguese region of the Azores. In this solo travel, I will explore three islands, Flores, Corvo and São Miguel. I will start my journey in Flores, Europe's westernmost island. Around 4,000 people live in this remote piece of paradise, which has a landscape of extreme natural beauty that resembles a lot to the Hawaiian archipelago. To get to this remote place in the Atlantic, I had to take a flight from Lisbon to São Miguel and take another flight to Flores. I am staying four days in Faja Grande, a small fishing village with only 200 inhabitants. Even though there's not much in the village, it's the best place to stay on Flores Island because it is located near the best hiking spots. Only a few steps away from the village, there is a 90 meters high waterfall named Poço do Bacalao. On my first day, I started a 10 km hike to reach the famous waterfall named Poço Ribeira do Ferreiro. It's definitely a place worth visiting. More than a dozen waterfalls stream down the green mountain and converge on the same lake. The landscape gives very Jurassic Park vibes. Even though the name Flores translates to flowers, for me this place represents the water island, with gorgeous lakes, creeks snaking through the hills, and towering waterfall plunging down the mountain. I stayed here for a while and I had a picnic in nature. What I miss the most about living in the Arctic is this lush greenery, something that is definitely not missing here in the Azores. There are seven main lagoons in Flores that used to be volcanic craters and they are all very close to each other, which makes the activity of lagoon hopping easier. If you are on a tight schedule and you have to prioritize, I recommend visiting Lagoa Negra and Combrida. They are located side by side and they are distinguished from each other by the different color. From the viewpoint there is also a beautiful 8 km hike that goes around the lakes and all the way down to the village of Faja Grande. This is my favorite hike in Flores Island. The hike from the lakes is very easy and it takes two hours to complete. While descending you can admire the stunning coastline views and the villages from above. For my last day I decided to relax in Faja Grande, taste some local food and enjoy the island's culture. You can feel the slow pace of daily life where stress and worries seem a distant memory. I ended the day with a beautiful sunset. The next day I left Flores and reached Corvo Island by ribboat. Corvo is the smallest and northernmost island of the Azores. The only village you can find here is Villa do Corvo, one of the smallest municipalities in Portugal with 460 inhabitants. Despite its size, the island does not disappoint. It attracts many travelers for diverse reasons – beauty, nature and mystery. Corvo provides an isolated getaway with astonishing green landscapes, narrow streets with black stones and ocean views. Since I'm only staying one day in Corvo, right after my arrival, I will start a 5km walk around the iconic crater, known for the most scenic views. The crater is 300 meters deep and the hike takes around 2 hours. Throughout the crater you see plenty of small lagoons. The highest point is 700 meters high. From here you can get a panoramic view of the Atlantic Ocean. After visiting Corvo Island I will fly to São Miguel from this small airport. The runaway is 800 meters long and 50 meters from the water's edge. São Miguel, also known as the Green Island, is the largest and most populated island in the Azores. A must-see if you come here is the beautiful Lagoa do Fogo, a crater lake located in the heart of the island. 
The turquoise lake is surrounded by lush mountains and it's one of my favorite views here in the Azores. The 30 minutes trail takes you all the way down to the bay of Lagoa do Fogo. This is a great spot to enjoy the surrounding nature in tranquility. It is not allowed to swim in the lake since it's protected by the Azorean government, however, it is worth having a stop if you are in São Miguel. Another lake that is worth visiting is Sete Cidades, located on the western side of the island. It is listed as one of the seven wonders of Portugal and it's worldwide famous for its iconic twin lake viewpoint. If you visit São Miguel, I recommend staying in Ribeira Grande, a coastal city with many accommodations and restaurants, also famous for its big swells and surfing competitions. On my second day in São Miguel, I visited Europe's largest and oldest tea plantation, the Chagoreana farm. The plantation is spread over 45 hectares and produces every year 40 tons of green and black tea. Visitors can witness the entire tea making process and have a nice walk on the farm while the air scents like drying tea leaves. From Ribeira Grande, there is a 30 minutes panoramic trail that takes you to a beautiful viewpoint overlooking the coastline. There's so much more to see in the Azores, but if you are on a tight schedule, these are the places you can't miss. Whether you come for the dramatic landscape or scenic hikes, the Azores should be at the top of your list if you are looking for an isolated getaway immersed in nature. If you want to discover more about the Azores, you can check my blog linked below, Boland. If you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe.